itself about the resurrection of Zinger's Magic Girl. That, uh, there was a game that was originally uh, started off as a uh, sort of homebrew project, turned into, uh, well, basically a disaster, but people paid a lot of money for games that they eventually got and then didn't work. Eric can tell you more about that. So please give it up for Eric Bartels. Hello, good afternoon again. I was asked to do it in English because of the German ladies and smarties and Germans and just understand Dutch. So, the man, well, where do I have to start? In 2019, someone came to us and said, I know Mexico and Holland, and uh, this Roger. And he wanted to convince Max to buy it. That's a short story. At that moment, uh, Max went to uh, the place where it's uh, supposed to be, and it's in some gra garage, or one minute ago, and Max was interested. At a later point, he asked me to look at it with a simple question, can you fix it? And I had five minutes to decide if it was uh, possible or not. I said yes. I still don't know why I said yes, but I said yes, and I did it together with Jim. I'll talk about Jim later. And so we found this in the garage, took it to our place, a secret attic, there was some, some small workshop in Holland. And then we started to investigate what's wrong with this machine. And you could better ask yourself what's not wrong with the machine. Because you had wood, you had parts, there is Max, yeah, big applause, he made it in time, oh my god, and uh, then we started to investigate what, what's wrong with it, and we were very quickly convinced that it was just a box of parts, you could see an old machine, that American pinball, just took all the parts, put it in a machine, tried to make it work, but it didn't succeed because the software was not was complete, but that's a difficult thing. The software guy who lived in England had to use Skype and Zoom to program the machine, but he didn't have an example. So he just programmed it as how he was told to do. And later we found, that we found out that the machine was nothing like what he had thought it was. So the software was not suitable for this playfield. And just at that moment, we, yeah, we, we, uh, we knew we had to be a software programmer. So that's why we also involved Jim. And Jim was one of the original programmers of FIFA, who also got scammed. So at first, he didn't want to help, but I convinced him. And uh, he became one of my best friends. Here you see the magic girl. Yeah, he's got another photo of Jonathan. My USB stick is broken, so I have not arrived at the side on This is why we fell in love with the machine. This is the right side of the cabinet, and it's even not the same as the left side. Each side is different. There's no pin here that has the same hardware quality. Well, another photo. Ah, that's not interesting. Ah, this one of the things we saw in the Magical is uh, this is the second machine where John Pompadour decided to use a moving tiger blade, a saw blade, saw blade. And also in the theater of magic there is one not turning of course. And this machine also, not surprisingly, not turning, not moving, just steady. That's one of the things we said, we cannot let that happen. We mounted a small motor underneath the, the, the feet, and now also this one is working, turning. If you uh, play the game and you hit the target HEX, then it will start moving slowly. The magic, ah, the magic part. One of the original play fields, John uh, designed the theater of magic. And in the prototype, there is a post between the flippers, the theater of magic post. But they took it out, it was too expensive. 
and he was so mad about it that in the Mexico he made a theater of magic post. But somebody else complains about the name and they have to take it out. So now we have the magic post. It's a, it's a nice detail. Ah. Also a small, uh, we took some photos from Martin, so there is no, uh, no order. This is one of the things we changed. In the right and left inlay, there are letters, L-O-C-K. You must make those letters to get a lock for your ball, or small ball. But you couldn't see the insert. So we made new plastics with small holes in it. Now you can see if it's like it or not. So you can look through the plastics. Next. Ah, this is the art here. Uh, one of the things is in the original uh, play field there are translucent of white uh, clear plastics. The idea was to give every letter a different color and so it was also programmed. But in the later versions all play fields have dark blue inserts. So now you have the difference between light blue, dark blue, some blue or whatever blue. So we took out in the program the function of it because you cannot see it. Uh, next. No, that's not interesting. These are the ramps. You have uh, on the left and on the right side, you have a curvy ramp. Uh, at first moment, they had to take the right ramp straight. And on the end of it, a magnet. John Ross magnet. And they wanted to keep the ball locked on the magnet. But we also tried it, but uh, the ramp became hot, started uh, dipping or reforming. So that's why we didn't go for a magnetism lock. And the way they are curved now, it was to get the, the speed of the ball was too high. And now it's, it's moving slowly to the, to the place where the lock has to be. Ah, yeah. Now you can see the curly ramp on the left and on the right, and the famous levitating magnet. This magnet was supposed to be, now I don't know where John went to school, but his idea was that when the ball goes underneath, at the back there was a target on the blade field, and it will hit the target and roll back. And at that moment the magnet had to suck the ball out of the blade field. It's impossible. Whatever you do, whatever you want to try, it's impossible. That's why American Pinball also decided to put a target underneath, under 45 degrees, so the ball could bounce up. But that, that even didn't work, because uh, it only would bounce if it was a steady and firm contact, not from moving targets. So we put a little ramp underneath, with lights behind it, so now the ball goes into the magnet, and each fourth time that it's in the magnet, it will start holding the ball like levitating. Maybe if John had more time, he would bounce it up and then down. That was his first idea. But yeah, it was too much work, it didn't happen. And he said, okay, it holds the ball. Uh, his, the main goal for this machine was get it ready, get it working. We are not responsible for the design. Some design, some design things are not good. Uh, ball gets stuck. Even this little owl. You can order it on the internet. It's from some nature program. Six doors. He mounted it in here. Nobody knows why. But we have to keep it that way. It's a famous place to get the ball stuck if it comes after me play for it. One of the also interesting things is the, the spinner. Everybody's looking at the player field, you can see the floating spinner. So a really nice concept. Designing, yeah, he can do that. He, he's a master in designing. He's not a master in uh, techniques. The screen, yes. One of the things that was uh, a real problem is that the screen is very big. But it was from the playing field until, the, the, yeah, until this point. So we raised the playing field as high as possible to see the 
much as possible from the screen. And we change the scores and other interesting things to the top of the screen so you could see what's happening. There was not uh, something they thought about. Ah, this is the new plan field. On the internet there was a lot of discussions about how do I get on the internet. Some guy told someone that there has to be a diverter here at the back and then the ball could come from the back to the mini play field. The mini play field is an exact copy of the Twilight Zone version. With this one it has an original exit from the left to the right. There was a big hole. And that didn't work also. So, first thing we have to solve is how do we get on the main play field? And it became that on the play field there was uh, originally designed a hole, an eject hole, with a vertical up kicker. And if the ball could get in that hole, you had to be a golfer, because it's impossible. The normal eject holes are always in front of the target or something, but not in the middle of a play field. So that's why they decided that the American people put an iron core in it and put a magnet around it like the ringmaster of Circus Voltaire. It would grab the ball. But as far as they got with designing it, they forgot to uh, put a switch in it. So the ball comes in the neighborhood and it, the machine doesn't see the ball, so the, the magnet doesn't do anything. There was originally seven magnets in the machine and only one was working for the magnet safe and the other ones were all cut because if you connect those things are starting burning and smoking but it was a lot of problems. So at that moment we, uh, I asked Jim to, to fix the problem. We had to find a way to get a switch in it because if the ball is on the, on the iron core it's lying in the middle of the play for doing nothing. And that was a problem. We couldn't use optos because there was no room left for optos. And uh, I stole some ID from a sharp uh, copy machine, uh, Xerox machines. It was an optical switch that could detect objects 10 to 30 centimeters from the, from the PCB. And we mounted here in the top corner a little, a little sensor that looks at the core, you can see it here underneath on the main play, on the play field. and it was constantly looking like an eddy switch. Maybe you know the eddy switch, an optical eddy switch we did, uh, we did, uh, made. And at that moment the ball was detected, it was grabbed by the magnet, but if the magnet was too strong, the effect of the came up because the core of the magnet were mounted, glued, but the glue together. So we had to take that apart, uh, invent complete new brackets so that the magnets wouldn't uh, take the, the up kicker to the, to the up position so that the ball wouldn't go off. And at that moment we saw for the first time that the ball was going through all those play fields into this air magnet. Then it, then it floats here, then it will drop down to this hole and goes here, and then you have to use the magnets for things like twilight zone. One of the things they uh, really did wrong is that a magnet tries to get the ball to the center. So if you want to move the ball upwards to here, you have to wait until the ball is here, and then give a pulse, and then it goes up. But 99 of the 100 times, the ball dropped down in the play field. So that's why we decided to close these holes make the play field one inch longer and do, and do the exit here. And now it's doable. It's not easy, like Max knows. He had a lot of complaints. And I told him that he couldn't play it because he's not good enough. The technique worked. And I did it once by accident and I said, I'm a good player. But now he's successful. He's better in it than me. That's the main play for. Oh yeah, the exit is on the back. You can see here a little iron ram. And it goes underneath to the magic mirror parts. And it, 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 uh, I have to reach the mini play field two times to get one of the elements to for the end game. That's wonderful. 
Uh, this is the skill shot, which is not interesting. And the other phone. That's it. Oh yeah, the, the locks. What you can not see on the photos, the locks. There are no locks in, uh, mechanisms in the in this whole playfield. We originally wanted to have magnets, they didn't work like I told. And then we saw that on the, underneath, on the ramp, there was mounted a plastic by the shape of a hand, left and right hand. And then we came to the idea, if we could move the hand, then you can grab a ball, take a ball. Like you see, the, 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 the play field has a, a face from the wizard on top, two hands. So you can see if you have some imagination that the two arms with hands and now because of the hand is moving you can grab the ball and hold it in the ramp. If I say it, it looks simple but for programmers it's a real difficult thing because uh, the balls keep coming into the ramp so they have to change the balls from lock to uh, playable ball. But if you play it, it looks nice. We also installed some extra lamps to show if the ball is locked or not locked. Uh, ah, like I said, the theater of magic post is one of the prototype playfields. We have one uh, Max has one prototype magic bow. Uh, if you look at that machine almost the same, but completely different artwork. And we are, we are still not convinced, or we don't know why they changed the artwork. Because if you have not that much money, and you develop a pinball machine, you have perfect art, why do you change it? As soon as you a photo, uh, John, uh, as soon as you a photo of my art, this is the other magical, this is the prototype. This is the game room of Max. And here you have the original cabinet artwork of the Magical prototype. There are well known four of these cabinets in the world. We have, of Max has one. And I, my opinion is it's good enough for a Magical. So we don't, we really don't know why they changed it. It must have cost a lot of money. And he was not rich, so why he did it, I don't know. This is the head of the uh, Magic Girl. Other artworks are the same. And this is, this is so beautiful. It's the right side of the head. You can always make an appointment and not to uh, see it uh, in life. It's the other side. You can see also that the left and the right side are not the same. It's unbelievable. So beautiful. The, the play field, this is the play field of, I can't see it, ah, this is the prototype. You can even see that the blue lightning bolts are here still clear. Another, these are the original hairs, like you saw the other. Here's the C and the K, but if you, as a player, you look, you can't see the C, and that's why we turn this in a, a little hole so you can see the, there are more than 67 changes to the playfield without noticing it. But that's one of the goals. Eh? If you uh, make this machine work, you can, you can do everything about it. But it has to stay magical, otherwise it will be a magical. It will, it will change too much. So the lock mechanisms, I think that's the, the, the most... Uh, uh, that's the thing that has the most impact on the machine. And all the other things are really, really small changes, but it made it work. Like those plastics, of course. But also, we didn't want to drill extra holes. We didn't do it. It's completely the same as it was designed. Another photo? No. I think for this moment, that's all the photo of uh, the rest of Someone have any questions? Uh, no? That's good. And if you want to play it, be my guest.
you want to have some explanation about the rules, you have to take an hour. There's more than seven pages of rules. Oh yeah, this is also nice. This black disc is duct tape. It's originally designed by Mr. John Pat Duke himself, duct tape. They want to have a spinning disc as a, some kind of skill. At the right side you have the magna safe, like they stole from the Black Knight 2000. And on the left side they had a spinning disc, it always turned uh, clockwise. And the idea was that the ball would grab the ball out of the drain. Now that didn't succeed. And we have another problem. On the left side of the cabinet, like on the right, there are two flipper buttons. But on the left side there was no wiring. Just a phony button, didn't do anything, just was there. So what we did is put some wiring on it and made a new PCB so you can change the direction of the turn of the disc. So if you convince that it's gonna get the ball into the drain, it will not, you can change the direction and take it out of the drain. And we put some uh, on the newer type, we have some new decals on it. And I copy it from the mini play field of the service for there, so it will stay the same uh, yeah. the same idea because black uh, duct tape. Yeah, it's made by American Pinball. It doesn't look really good. On the right side, on the right machine, we have uh, one of the first. I put a white triangle on it. You can, you can see it on the video for left and for right. And on the later models, uh, we have a small now, picture of the mini play field. Now that's the magic mirror. I come from the mini play field and drops down on this play field. And you get battlefield to feed it. I didn't know there was a battlefield, but that's fun. <laughs> the ramp diverted. Yeah, another story. On top of the ramp, they made a coil. And it was supposed to divert the ball to the left or to the right rim, but it didn't work. The ball always went underneath it. it didn't. The movement of the flap was too short, so the ball always got underneath. And it also was in the view of the monitor. It was a big coil, so that's why they decided to put it underneath the rim with a spring and just a wire gate for better looks. Yeah, the prototype, a nice photo, is from the score cards, the instruction cards. The prototype had these plastics on it. And we are still, uh, one of our wishes is to, come, to copy those from the prototype to this machine, because the engravement is so beautiful and the, the, the little uh, lightning bolts. But that's for later on, because the machine is never finished, I think. You can always go further, beautiful and better. This is done from the original machines like here, just an instruction card. It's uh, printed on canvas and they uh, screw it onto uh, the metal so you cannot change it normally. It's ugly. And this is done the play fields. That's what we did in three years. And of course with Jim. Jim is not here at this moment. No questions? I'm going to start to drink a beer. Nothing.